As a primary care physician, we have been very uh, frustrated by our ability to uh, prevent the development of diabetes in patients who we recognize are at high risk to develop diabetes. That would be a typical middle-aged person who doesn't get much exercise, is overweight or obese, and has blood sugar levels uh, in the range that we know uh, are associated with high rates of conversion to diabetes. Since the publication of the Diabetes Prevention Program in 2002, we've known uh, that there are effective means to prevent diabetes, but we've been unsure how to value them with respect to other kinds of interventions that we offer in clinic. And in particular, we've been unsure about the value of using medications in apparently healthy people to prevent future development of a disease. So what we've heard today is that um, not only are the use of metformin or uh, uh, structured lifestyle intervention effective at preventing uh, the development of type 2 diabetes in susceptible people uh, over the course of 10 years, but um, they not only they uh, are not only effective, but uh, in the case of metformin, save money. And in the case of a th- Uh, uh, intensive lifestyle intervention um, are highly cost-effective relative to many interventions that we um, provide to patients without thinking twice about it. Dr. Herman mentioned that some previous modeling analyses suggested that maybe these interventions are not cost-effective. Does this study now make it a slam dunk saying, yes, it is? This um, previous modeling exercises were exactly that, modeling exercises. They took um, a variety of rates and assumptions uh, and put them into various statistical prediction models or sophisticated physiology models to estimate what the cost effectiveness might be under a range of assumptions. Uh, What Dr. Herman presented today were actual real-life costs of real patients uh, in the framework of long-term follow-up from uh, the diabetes prevention program. So what we're looking at is the actual costs of patients in U.S. medical health care system. There are really no assumptions at all here, and I think that um, these data are as firm as possible, as firm as any data that could be obtained uh, about the costs and cost effectiveness. In terms of a slam dunk, um, I think if you focus on uh, cost effectiveness, clearly a slam dunk. If you focus on integrating them into actual practice, I think there's still some work to be done. There's several challenges uh, in it um, in uh, in uh, changing practice immediately. One is the um, uh, that that I have to address before I would actually start to change my practice. And the first is identifying the right individuals to uh, actually provide these kind of interventions for. The Diabetes Prevention Program had a fairly strict set of criteria for eligibility, um, including use of an oral glucose tolerance test, which we don't typically use in clinical practice today. So the, the, the first challenge in translating immediately into clinical practice is figuring out who you would provide these for. And then the second challenge is... Um, Uh, would be from the policy operational side, and that's a challenge of patient preference, which practicing clinicians face every day, and we do it intuitively without uh, being recommended one way or another, and that's to sit down with patients and talk to them about what they would prefer to do.